You're welcome to our second video on nuclear chemistry and in this video I'll be showing us how to do some basic calculations in nuclear chemistry. Um, on this side I have some very commonly used formulas. The first one says fraction left is equal to half raised to the power of n. But what is n? n is given time over half-life. Now in the half-life question it's common for half-life to be given and that's our t half here. But t0 is given time. So in most cases, any other time in the question fits or qualifies as our t0. Now when using this formula, we must bear in mind that t0 and t half must have the same units. So that n is unitless. So fraction left is half raised to the power of n. And then on this side, we have ni over nf equals 2 raised to the power of n. I'll show us how to use this formula. Then this is a very common relationship that you would have mastered from long before now. It says half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over lambda. Lambda there is called decay constant. So I could bring lambda up here and take half-life down there and the formula would still be valid. Meanwhile, this value of 0 0.693, which is a constant, which is lean 2 actually, is um, sometimes reported to four decimal places. So you may see a book use 0 0.6932. That's still in order. Then there's the last formula here. This one is for calculating activity. So if we are given a question on activity, this formula would definitely work. Then there's also what we call specific activity, which is activity of one gram. Activity of a one gram sample is called specific activity. And if we were to calculate specific activity, we must bear in mind that all you need to do to this formula is remove the mass. So when mass is removed from that formula, what we are left with is specific activity. Meanwhile, in this formula, lambda still remains decay constant, but this time it must be in reciprocal second. It must be in reciprocal second for the activity here to be in DPS, which is disintegrations per second. So the units of these two must match. The activity here is in disintegrations per second, no other unit, while this lambda must be in reciprocal second, or what you call per second. Then this is mass, mass of the um, substance whose activity is being discussed. Na, of course, is Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23. And then mm here is molar mass. So the molecular mass of the substance are, well, in most instances, what I'm calling molar mass here may actually be atomic mass. Yes, atomic mass. So it's better written as AM. Yeah, because usually we talk about activity in relation to a particular element, not a compound. So let's say atomic mass. That's what we have there. But just know the difference between that, the specific mass of the sample, and then this one is the atomic mass of the element. So if I have, let's say, 5 grams of uranium-238, the 5 grams is my mass, while the 238 is the atomic mass of uranium. Now over to this side, there are two questions waiting for us. And the opening statement there says the half-life of uranium is given as 6 years. So uranium has a half-life of six years. That's not very correct. But for this question, it is. We'll assume it's true. Based on that statement, here comes the first question. It says, what fraction of an X gram sample of uranium will remain after an 18-year period? Now, in the question, we're given six years, and that was clearly labeled as half-life. Then, on this side, the only thing we were given is a period of 18 years. If you look at the formula for fraction left, it is half raised to power n. And to get n, I just need two periods of time, which are t0 and t half. So the t half is the half life there, and t0 is this given time. So that for question 1, I'm going to say n equals... 18 over 6, which is T0 over T half, and that gives me 3. It's unitless, like we said, because this is in years, and that's in years. Now that I have my N, I'm going to say fraction left equals 1 over 2 raised to the power of 3, and that gives me 1 over 8. It's that simple. That's the answer. So no wonder the X was not given to us, because, of course, it wasn't required. 
So 1 over 8 is the fraction left. But bear in mind that sometimes, instead of fraction left, they will ask us for fraction lost. If asked for fraction lost, that would be 1 minus fraction left. So the fraction lost for this case would be 1 minus 1 over 8, which is 7 over 8. But of course, that's if you are asked for fraction lost. Otherwise, what is more commonly asked is fraction left. On the other side, how long will it take for a 256 gram sample of a uranium salt to disintegrate to just 16 grams? Well, Ni over Nf in this formula here stands for initial amount or initial number of moles or initial mass or initial count rate and final amount, final mass, final count rate, all right? So initial over final, that's what we have as N and NF. In this case, since I was given parameters in grams, that's masses now, NI will be the initial mass while NF will be the final mass. And I'll tell you, whether we're looking at mass, amount, count rate or anything, initial is always bigger than final. Initial is always bigger than final. Now by um, a good understanding of the English, you can also make it out from here that 256 has to be the initial because it says how long will it take for 256 to become 16. So 256 has to be the initial while 16 is the final. But like I said, even without a proper understanding of English, you must understand that NI is always bigger than NF. So on the basis of that, I can apply the same formula. I can apply the same formula in that I'll say Ni over Nf is equal to 2 raised to the power of n. Now our Ni initial is 256 divide our final 16 equals 2 raised to the power of n. Now it means that 2 raised to the power of n is 256 divide 16 is 16. This 16 is the same as 2 raised to the power of 4. It means, therefore, that n is 4. But n is not what we are looking for. n is actually given time over half-life. We know the half-life to be 6 years. So what would be the given time? That's what they are asking us for in the question when they said, how long? So to finish that off, I'm going to say, I'll make that the subject now, t0 equals n times half-life. So that would be 4 times. The half-life there is 6 years. So that gives me 24 years. So it means that after 24 years, a 256 gram sample of a substance of half-life 6 years should have become 16 grams. There's the layman's way of verifying this answer, of showing that this answer is correct. I'll um, show you that right here. So look at this small space. You have a 256 gram sample of a substance whose half-life is six years. Now it means that after six years, this 256 gram sample would have become half. That's the mean of half-life. How long it takes for a given amount to become half. So after six years, 256 would have become half, which is one to eight grams. Then after another six years, which comes to 12 years now, the 1 to 8 grams would have come down to 64 grams. After another 6 years, which is at 18 years, 64 grams would have come down to 32 grams. And then finally, after um, the next 6 years, which is 24 years now, the 32 grams would have come down to half, which is 16 grams. So even from here, it's obvious that for 256 grams to disintegrate or decay to 16 grams, it will take 24 years if one half-life is 6 years. So truly, that answer of 24 years is very correct. We are done with this question. You may pause the video to look through the solution again, after which you can play it so that you see what the next question will be like. It will be a question on activity. Now for activity, we have two questions on the board already. One of them says a sample of strontium-90 has an activity of 
0.5 millicurie. What is the mass of the sample? Then the second question under that is what is the specific activity of the sample? And the last one, what is the activity after 30 years? For that question, we are given the half-life of strontium-90 as 19.9 years. Then, of course, we have a second question. The specific activity of a radioisotope of atomic mass 102 AMU was found to be 1.0 times 10 raised to the power 11 nanocurie. Determine the half-life in years of the isotope. Now, what you do for me is copy this question. Yeah, have a copy of this question. Let me pause the video now. Have a copy of this question. So that as I solve, you can relate your question to the solution I'll provide. Now, I'll start solving this question by explaining to you first the units of activity. See what we have. Um, we say that activity is usually measured in becquerels, which is DPS, disintegrations per second. But I mentioned also in the first video that there is an old unit of activity, which is the Curie. And this Curie has several subunits as well. Now, one Curie is known to be 3.7 times 10 raised to the power 10 disintegrations per second. This is one Curie. But there are other units like the millicurie. One millicurie is 3.7 times 10 raised to the power 7 DPS. Then we have um, the microcurie, which is 3.7 times 10 raised to the power 4 DPS. And then finally, we have the nanocurie, which you saw in that question too. One nanocurie is 3.7 times 10 raised to the power 1 DPS. Of course, this is the same as 37 DPS. So this is how to convert from curie and other forms of the curie, other subunits of the curie, to disintegrations per second. So that if I were to solve question 1 now, for question 1, I was given activity as 0 0.5 millicurie. Millicurie, but this is one millicurie. So this 0 0.5 millicurie can be converted into disintegrations per second by multiplying it by 3.7 times 10 raised to the power of 7. Then for this same formula, or this same um, first question, I was given Avogadro's number, or I know Avogadro's number to be 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23. Then also I was given that um, the atomic mass of strontium is 90, because in the question they said strontium 90. And then the last thing, I was given the half-life as 19.9 years. But see something, this my activity is in disintegrations per second, like we said. And that means this half-life too must be brought to seconds. How do I bring 19.9 years to seconds? I will have to say that's 19.9 times 365, because that brings it to days, because 365, years, 365 days rather make a year. So 19.9 years to be converted to days should be multiplied by 365, then multiplied by 24 hours in a day, then multiplied by 3,600 seconds in an hour. So this is what I have as the half-life of strontium-90 in seconds. But if you look at our formula for activity, which we wrote before, we said activity is equal to decay constant times mass, times Avogadro's number all over molar mass. What we need here is decay constant, not half-life. So I'm going to say now that the decay constant is 0 0.693 divide what we have there, 19.9 times 365 times um, 24 and 3006. If you evaluate this to get your decay constant, you are going to obtain 1.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 reciprocal second. So this is my decay constant now, and I'm ready to proceed. Remember, what I was asked in the first question was mass, which is here. So I'm going to say mass is equal to activity times atomic mass over lambda times Na. So that the mass now becomes activity. The activity, um, I have it here, as 0 
times 3.7 times 10 raised to the power of 7 times the atomic mass yes that's 90 and then under that I have lambda my lambda is right here 1.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 and finally Avogadro 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23 so having plugged all of those in the mass will be obtained as 2.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 grams so that's the answer to the first question this is the mass so to get the mass i just make it the subject of this formula which is our main formula for activity remembering that this activity must be in disintegrations per second and this decay constant must be in reciprocal second so i have the mass already without wasting time the second question says I should calculate the specific activity and we said before that specific activity is everything in this formula as it is without the mass so it means that I can get specific activity as lambda what's my lambda 1.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 times Na 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23 over atomic mass which is 90 if you do that you get the specific activity as 7.4 times 10 raised to the power 12 dps all right so if you don't want to write it that way you may be more correct you want to be more correct you write that dps uh, per gram dps per gram remember that activity here is in dps then this one is in graph so we say activity or specific activity is measured in dps per gram okay so having said that having written that one now it means we have finished the second question and let's move on to the third for the third question i would have to make some space here for the third question we were asked to calculate the activity after 30 years now to do this, I'll bring back one of our previous formulas, Ni over Nf equals 2 raised to the power of N. Ni is the initial activity. I mentioned it before that Ni is initial, initial count rate, initial anything, and then Nf is final. So that the initial activity is what we were given as 0 0.5 times 10, sorry, times 3.7 times 10 raised to the power 7 I'm multiplying by this because the 0 0.5 is in millicurie divided by final activity which I may call AF equals 2 raised to the power of now I was asked to calculate the activity after 30 years that 30 year period is my T0 while my half life remains 19.9 so what I have here is 30 over 19.9 so this will give me 2 raised to the power of 1.51 so coming down I'll say 0 0.5 times 3.7 times 10 raised to the power of 7 over final activity equals 2.85 so that the final activity now NF would be 0 0.5 times 3.7 times 10 raised to the power of 7 divide 2.85 when you carry out this division your answer comes out as 6.5 times 10 raised to the power 6 dps so this is my final activity in dps if you want this value if you want this final activity in millicurie just divide it by 3.7 times 10 raised to the power of 7 and you will get the activity in millicurie so we went from millicurie to dps by multiplying by that value so going from dps to millicurie requires you dividing by that value so i have one more question which is our question two but before solving it yes you can pause the video now and uh, make use of everything on the board so that i can have more room to solve the next question All right, moving on to the last question, which is also the second question on activity. In that question, we're given parameters, but we're specifically asked for uh, half-life. Yeah, we're asked for half-life. So since in that formula, or in that question, we had specific activity, we'll say specific activity equals lambda 
times Na over atomic mass. Were we given specific activity? Yes, they said it was 1.1 times 10 raised to the power 11 nanocurie. And then they also gave us um, the atomic mass. They said the atomic mass is 102 AMU. We know Avogadro's number, of course, that it is um, 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23. So we're almost set, but this specific activity cannot be used like this. It's a nanocurie. How do we convert it to um, DPS? Of course, we said before that one nanocurie is 37 DPS. Therefore, 1.1 times 10 raised to the power 11, or 1.0 rather, that's what we're given, 1.0 times 10 raised to the power 11, nanocurie will be equal to X. So how do we get our X? You multiply these two. When you do that, you realize that the specific activity is better written as 3.7 times 10 raised to the power 12 DPS. Having armed myself with all of these things, I can get decay constant from here. So I'm going to say that the decay constant now, making it the subject, is specific activity times atomic mass over Avogadro's number. So decay constant equals specific activity. 3.7 times 10 raised to the power of 12 times atomic mass 102 AMU divide the last thing there is um, what do we have Na Na so we have Na as um, 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23 now let me quickly mention let me quickly mention that the 102 AMU given to me is atomic mass, yes, but what I'm plugging into this formula is 102 grams. Because when the atomic uh, mass of an element is given as, let's say, 50 AMU, it means that it's, um, uh, what do you call it now, molar mass, yeah, for that atom, for that element, will be 50 grams per mole. So the number, the figure, the um magnitude of the mass does not change it's just the unit that changes to differentiate atomic mass from molar mass for elements so that at the end of the day moving on from here i would obtain the decay constant for this question as 6.27 times 10 raised to the power minus 10 reciprocal second but i'm not done because it's not decay constant i want what i want is half-life so I'm going to say now half-life equals 0 0.693 over decay constant. So that the half-life will be equal to 0 0.693 divide. The decay constant I obtained 6.27 times 10 raised to the power minus 10. So that gives me the half-life as 35.0 years. So what I've done now is, watch, I divided this after dividing, after dividing, um, what do you call it now, the 0 0.693 by lambda, decay constant, I obtained the half-life in what unit? In seconds. Remember, this is in reciprocal second. And in the previous question, we had gone from years to seconds. How? We multiplied by 365, then multiplied by 24, then multiplied by 3006. So your answer from here in seconds, if you want to take it back to years, you would need to divide by 3006, then divide again by 24, and then divide by 365, and that will give you exactly 35 years. You will do well to look for more questions on activity. I try to be as fast as possible with this to make the video as short as possible because, of course, we know that um, students have challenges with long videos. They first may not have all the time, and then second, data is also an exam, um, a constraint. So based on that, I have tried to make everything very fast but um, rich enough to satisfy all of your desires in this area. So you look for more questions, get to solve them, see how efficient my formulas are, and I'm sure you'd be glad you had watched this video. There'll be a next video. I don't know what it will be on, but of course I'll look at my list of requests that people have made and see what um, next video would be very easy for us to prepare. So I'll see you in the next video. Remember to like, share and subscribe to this channel.
Thank you.